Buster Lives Matter versus Fruit Alliance. All right, guys. Team number one on the left-hand side, we have Buster Lives Matter. And on the right, team two, we have Fruit Alliance. <clears throat> so we've got the 15-minute timers you guys can see down at the bottom. Ready to go here. Let's look at these interesting strats. Now, I worked with Nitromuse on this map to spice it up a little bit. There were, we had to actually some really good conversations about how to decide. We thought about putting an extra mine in here to give the players an opportunity at six, but we thought because of the way the base is designed already that using five in this specific map would help prevent uh, additional wood spam in the front of the base to help draw the art to, to prevent the game from being drawn out longer. And we wanted to... Uh, try and force more rushes out of here. You can see Rage Alert already putting some additional wood spam in the front of his core, uh, getting ready for any early harass. This is a fantastic map. I thought, in my opinion, when I played on it, uh, as uh, Shaylong and I did some testing on the maps to try and find quick exploits and weird things that you can do, uh, try to prevent janky core swings and things like that. Um, <coughs> and setting that up. So... <laughs> but we did we did find that this map was was really good. We just fixed a couple nodes that were incorrectly placed, uh, adjusted a few of the things on the top to try and make sure that players had equal access on both sides. We wanted to make sure that everything was fair, that no players had an advantage, uh, and this is kind of what we came up with. Uh, but thank you, Nitromuse, for contributing this very interesting map. Um, I like these kind of vertical styles. It gives opportunities here. You can see that we placed in these, um, I think they're two and a halfs, I don't have uh, opportunity or access to the grid. <coughs> Sounds like a Tron reference for those of you guys that are old enough. Uh, accessing the grid. <coughs> but. It gives them opportunities to place weapons down here. You can. S this is very interesting in competitive gameplay. We have yet to see any cannons. Uh, game up your life. Going for the laser tech. I like to see that. That's actually... If he does a, a bunch of fire beams, it's actually going to be really good and counter some Joe Apocalypse. If he takes his fire beams from the top base and angles them downwards at the bottom base, as the rockets come across the map, he will be able to um, fire beam them down. I can actually show you exactly what I'm talking about here. <coughs> we do have access. We have the technology here at Synergy Gaming TV to show you guys all sorts of crazy jank. So, if he's over here, if he brings his fire beams down in this direction, okay as the rockets from here come across as they cross over this fire beam um, they might well uh, the angle has to be a little bit higher but when they cross over this it will light the rockets on fire and hopefully um, burn them up before they hit his base so he can use it defensively as well as if Joe Apocalypse here at the top decides to fire downwards at T-Bob he will be able to use those uh, fire beams defensively to protect his teammate so that's going to be a very interesting strat uh, if they decide to go that route uh, or you can just go pure damage and use plasmas. It could go either way. Gonna be interesting to see what's happening here. <clears throat> Looking like, because of the close distancing, so they have done some practicing, uh, essentially any time that a, a pro player uh, sees the, the bases close enough, it always comes out to be rockets and shotguns, which I'm really glad to see that there hasn't been any too crazy, janky technology already. Looking like T-Bob and Game Up Your Life are going to have some difficulty here. They have no defenses against this rocket barrage. Those are three rocket launchers coming at Game Up Your Life. Very, very difficult here. No gunners, no nothing. Trying to go for flak. Um, one of the things we will be talking about, guys, in the tutorial videos, if you guys are new, haven't checked out the tutorial videos yet, you can see them on my YouTube uh, if you guys are watching on YouTube, you can scroll down and see the link in the description. If not, exclamation mark, Forts Tutorials in the Twitch chat will give you a link over to the Forts Tutorial playlist on YouTube. But one of the things we'll be talking about in the weapons is what weapons counter what weapons and what's the best design. Oh, those shotguns putting in some serious work from Rage Alert. Joe Apocalypse coming with the rockets to changes his target. T-Bob, as they're looking at the bases, that is proper scouting right there, as you can see. They, they noticed that T-Bob had a weakness in their base, and he decided to change his target from the top to the bottom, giving Game Up Your Life the opportunity to make a comeback here. Placing exposed gunners, probably not the best options against shotguns. T-Bob dangling by some bracing. It's going to be end of game for T-Bob. Here, we're sitting at 4 minutes and 47 seconds. <coughs> GG for T-Bob.
interesting match here, guys. We're going to see if we can get a little bit of this bracket updated. I don't want to uh, I don't want to be too preemptive on who I think is going to win and who I think is going to lose, but we're definitely going to take an opportunity here. Fruit Alliance going to be in the hot seat. All right. Oh, crazy damage coming in. Game up your life. Making that expansion, trying to take his teammate's base. <clears throat> now, is team one going to be ready? Whoa. Is team one going to be ready? I think we'll be able to handle that. A little bit of an expansion. It'd be nice to see that they can place their mines up there. No one has placed mines on top except for Rage Alert. Joe Apocalypse just going to run on three. They do have a commanding lead on here. Game up your life. Trying to delay the game as long as possible. Adding... Oh, this is smart. Putting in the gunners below where the shotguns can hit. Joe Apocalypse is going to come in here with his own shotgun eventually and have the downward angle. That's going to be huge. Look at that game up your life. Coming in with a great strat, only losing one gunner. These two are going to put in some serious work this game. Game up your life coming in with a great strat there. Great strat there. That was, uh, that was actually quite clever. Quite clever indeed. <coughs> All right, my predictions have been entered. Game up your life. Doing a great job here. Had to know that uh, placing more exposed gunners down there, though, is going to be an issue. There it is. Joe Apocalypse coming in with his angled down shotgun. Bring it up here. Be nice to see if he built up here. Get the expansion, place some mines down, and then have more shotguns up here to get that downward angle. With Rage Alert being here, getting the bottom angle. Joe Apocalypse could use the top angle. Game up your life. Definitely, uh, definitely got the strategy going on here. Wood spam is definitely the answer. But this is a little bit of what we were worried about. Um, you know, you can see here that Game After Life is working on just two mines right now, but adding too much wood spam in the front of a base um, can create issues in getting the game to end, right? Luckily for us, in the timer, adding a bunch of wood spam like this, even if no damage hits the core, the game will end in Team 1's favor with damage done overall in a worst case scenario. So that's one of the reasons that in tournaments they use a timer like that is to make sure you prevent um, the delaying of the game and stalling with wood spam like this. It's only a temporary strategy. In a non-timered match, this kind of wood spam is a great way to uh, hold the game out, but all you have to do is destroy that wood spam, and uh, that counts as damage done to their base, and can lead to victory for the other team. What kind of strategy is Game Up Your Life going to come up with here? I'd like to see him expand his economy a little bit. It's going to be a bit difficult here. You can see he's got the angled wood, the angle bracing there to help prevent some of the shotgun blasts. Rockets coming in, taking out the gunners. Joe Apocalypse instantly identifying the angle that he needs. Got the rockets coming downwards to apply some pressure. Absolutely fantastic. Very excited for this one. Uh, a big shout out to Shaylong as well for organizing the whole back end of this, keeping the players ready to go. That is a huge, huge help. Things to be running smoothly. Once I gave him the correct bracket so he knows what teams are where, that makes a big difference in efficiency. So a big shout out to him. Thank you so much. Down to six minutes remaining. Joe Apocalypse making a small expansion here. Are we gonna are we gonna see nukes? We're not gonna see nukes just yet. He might place down some mines. Okay, so we're not gonna see nukes. So he might expand there. Um, we could see. We could see Rage Alert bust out some buzz sauce to help cut through there, but I don't think they're worried too too much about. Um, I don't think they're worried about destroying him. They're just going to keep doing damage. They've already got the game in the bag in terms of damage dealt. So in this kind of situation, in this kind of situation, guys, this is where um, different commanders can come into play. Something like Phantom. Phantom on this type of map, in this type of situation, would be amazing. Because what, what could happen up here, game up your life, could be back here 
Uh, building some more bracing and building weapons, right? He could have his fire beams and plasmas out, activate the ability, because he's tanking damage like a boss. Could activate the ability, move the weapons up to the front, and then create a good attack. There we go, taking out his economy. He's a running on one mine, not upgraded. Gonna be hard to repair all of that damage. So this is a great map. So this is one of the reasons that we picked this map uh, for this tournament, is I wanted to, uh, hopefully to see other commanders. Someone like like Phantom would be really good in this situation. Adding the wood spam in the front gives you the opportunity to turtle and prevent core damage while your weapons build in the back of the base. And then you just portal them, or not portal them, but teleport them to the front using Phantom's active abilities. You can move weapons around. You could place gunners in the back and then move them to the front. Long has had some connection issues there. We're going to have to wait for him to rejoin in the next match. Oh, game up your life. Definitely doing a great job here. Running on one mine. Trying to delay the inevitable crash, bang, boom. Waiting for the core damage to start. Team 1 in a commanding lead here. Buster lives matter. There it is. Oh, they blew the core right out of the bracing. GG! Alright guys, let's head back to the lobby.